Hey everybody, Skyler here, and uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I am actually going to be doing a live interview, obviously, you know from the title of this, that's what this is. Um, but it's been the my first live interview I've ever done, and I just so happened to be able to do it with my favorite crypto YouTuber, which is like, holy moly, uh, my channel has 2,000 subscribers, right, to his 170 I don't even know what it is. I haven't looked on it in a while, but you know, everyone knows Cameron Daly, obviously. <laughs> Cameron Daly, Crypto Daily, if you're watching this, right? Um, but I, I kind of wanted to like uh, tell you guys uh, kind of how this transpired because I kind of want to brag about Cameron. I don't, I don't know if this actually had anything to do with it, but this is like the events that transpired. So um, I, uh, I was having um, a, a rough day, week. I don't know what you want to call it, and I was just like, man, I'm having a hard time making videos on, on Twitter, and I was just like, I'm struggling with the motivation, and uh, you know, I was just kind of pouring myself out there a little bit. <laughs> and uh, Cameron reached out and he was just like, man, uh, I hope you're doing okay, if there's anything I can do. And I'm just like, yeah, thanks Cameron, <laughs> you know? Uh, cool, my favorite YouTuber is just saying what's up, you know? <laughs> and um, anyways, and then he's like, yeah, man, if you ever wanna like do a video together or whatever, and I was just like, uh, yeah, I'd like to do a video with you later, right? <laughs> um, I mean, internally, I'm like, I'm like having an introverted personality, right? So I'm just like, uh, you're gonna screw it up. Don't do it. You're gonna make a fool of yourself. <laughs> um, anyways, but obviously, I can't say no. It's my favorite YouTuber, right? Um, anyways, so he agreed to it, and um, and uh, we just did this, you know, yesterday is actually when, when it took place, but. Um, but yeah, um, I apologize for my awkwardness in the interviews, my first ever, and um, and uh, and yeah, interesting. I just want to bring this up too. Um, I kind of like, I'm still like baffled by this. But um, when we were talking initially, I was like, I wrote a bunch of questions, and they're all questions about Cameron. Obviously, we want to know about Cameron, right? Um, and uh, he's like, I don't think anyone's really going to care about that. And like, he's like, maybe we just the crypto questions, you know? And I was like. Hmm, interesting. Sorry, Cameron, but I believe people want to know about you. <laughs> and uh, so that's what this Q&A is, is mainly about, is Cameron, because, you know, freaking Cameron's awesome, right? So, um, you know, uh, appreciate him coming on, and uh, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys, you know, watching this, and, uh, you know, I guess, you know, here, here it is. <laughs> How's it going, man? Um, good. Um, cool. it's, been, it's been good, good, man. I'm glad you're, uh, you're willing to do this with me. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I actually, I actually noticed, I, I've only seen one stream that you were on before. Um, and then as I was, um, looking at, I was trying to actually find a thumbnail. Um, and, uh, and then I found you're on quite a, f a couple other people's streams actually. So, um, but yeah. So appreciate well, if you wanted kind of shots of me with a green background, I could make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> fans, password needed. With us like back to back or something. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <That's good. laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, I, I thought um I'd like to do this with you because you know there's I, I see what you're trying to do. I see you're trying to be a you know, one of those rare places where a newcomers to crypto can go and sort of have honest information and stuff that's like you know tailored toward them and looking after them which is kind of rare on youtube you know uh, especially the honest stuff so yeah um you know definitely happy to do this with you oh yeah cool yeah i appreciate it yeah i am um, you know i i when i first made this channel too i i was kind of lackadaisical about it i i didn't know anything about youtube i actually started watching youtube like six months before I made this channel and I was watching a uh, Casey Neistat videos, <laughs> but then I was like, Same, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. really? Oh, that's yeah. funny. Then I was like, man, I want to do something like that. Right. So, um, but then I started watching yeah. YouTube videos and then I started, uh, of, uh, of crypto. There's no like vlogger cryptos. And I thought maybe I can do that one day or I don't know, but then it kind of got frustrating because I saw so many, um, just videos of like really bad misinformation. And as I like barely started learning about crypto, I was like, how the freak does this have like 700,000 views? And like, and then I did see people that were like, you know, helpful and like, we're calling those channels out. But then those people like Martini guy and uh, 
and um uh, i think who, who are a couple there's another one that i used to watch that um i think he got taken down but um but every time they they call out those those type of channels and people they like get flooded with strikes and stuff like that and so it's just like did you see that martini guy's stuff against the uh, forex scammers that stuff was so funny oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've seen yeah he's he made a couple of them yeah they're all really really funny yeah like i i for fun i'll go and check out some of those site those those channels that he talked about it is so funny they're so fake and it's just glorious <laughs> unlike anything else really yeah <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, it's it's weird. You think who falls for that stuff, but people do. Tons of people. So but, when did uh, you? When were you watching Casey? Because I watched him too, and I was like, I want to do that. And um, yeah, tw toward the end of late 2017, I tried it, and it was really really hard. I did it, and I was, it's just unsustainable. So I have no idea how he, how he continues to do it, or at least you know he stopped now, but he was doing yeah. it back then. Yeah, and he was working on like a 40 hour a week job and and he said that he got home and he would spend his entire night with his kids until like seven or eight or something like that. And then he edit from like eight to two in the morning and wake up at six or I don't even know. Yeah, I wonder how much he embellishes. I wonder if that was like one day he did that. And so he'll make it out like he does it every single day. But yeah, yeah, it, whatever it was, he's got a, a really good work ethic. Yeah, that's my biggest problem of when I first came on YouTube, I thought I had to make a bunch of YouTube videos uh, every single day. And 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 I was like, well, I'm going to have to make I can't make the quality because I don't have the time to, to edit and stuff like that. And I'm learning editing. And and um, so. So, yeah, I don't know. Eventually, maybe one day it'd be cool to get there. But. But yeah, yeah, man, it's 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 definitely worth trying, I'd say. Absolutely. Yeah, my um, my uh, buddy. I don't know if uh, uh, you know. I, I told you about uh, my homie who works for uh, Mr. Beast. He's his producer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's always like giving me like. He's always telling me like, oh, you should change your thumbnail to this. And he's like, why don't? He's like, why aren't you on camera anymore? Why don't you put your face in? And I'm like, I'm slowly like not taking advice just because I'm like introverted. And well, um, well, tell me about you, man. How did you? How did you first get into crypto? Like. So uh, I, I knew I knew this guy who was uh, pretty rich and I was and, and, and he was uh, he was t like there was a bunch of us. Right. And he was saying like how to get rich. And he, he gave some like, you know, standard advice. And then when he was done, like I approached him private. I was like, you know, how, how do you really do it, though? And this is back in like 2013. He's like stock market. You just have to get involved. And so since then, I was. um very interested in investments, very interested in, in that whole side of, of the world that I wasn't involved in at all, but there was a lot of barriers to entry. Like it's really expensive. If you don't, especially back then for uh, Robin Hood and stuff, if you didn't have much to start with, you'd lose a lot in transaction fees and whatnot. So I wanted to buy AMD. This is back in 2016. And then uh, it went on a tear and I didn't buy it just because of the, the transaction fees. Like it, well, I like 10 X in like eight months or so. We know it's because of the mining craze, right? NVIDIA did the same thing. But um, I thought after that, like I, the next thing that I, that I find, like I, I just really need to, you know, stop putting this aside. I need to get involved. And I was on Reddit. I'd like to say I was browsing some like smart stuff. I was looking up some, uh, some, you know something some something intelligent but i was looking at memes right uh and uh i saw one and it was about the C ceo of reddit and he was talking about golem which is uh like i don't know where it is in the top 100 now but it's a crypto you ever heard of golem gnt yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> completely random right uh, it was uh it was meant to be um AI on a blockchain, something like that. I don't remember, but I thought, okay, that's, that's interesting. Let me find out about this. And that was my first crypto purchase, but obviously I had to buy Bitcoin in order to buy that. And then, so I started researching what Bitcoin was and uh, never in my life have I ever been so interested in anything. I took a week off work and spent all day morning until uh, evening, until I slept, like literally all day, just reading, finding more out about it. And I did this for, yeah, about a week straight. And 
started making YouTube videos afterwards because it captured my attention so much. I was so enthralled by it. You know, the whole thing that happened in 2008, the banking, uh, the the way they robbed people and made the people pay them back. Like, I, I hated the banking system after that. And so when I, yeah, I just, I'm just so interested in Bitcoin. This is in uh, early 2017. Oh, wow. I, for some reason, I thought you got in a little earlier. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I that's when I got into 2017 is when, well, I think 2016, I bought my first Litecoin. And then 2017 on the coin app, Coinbase app is when I put like 300 in or, or something like that. And then it exploded. And then all of a sudden, but I, when I was, when I was introduced into Bitcoin, it, it was kind of uh, uh, ridiculous because Back in the day, uh, this is, I don't even know, whenever the whenever Bitcoin was under a hundred bucks, uh, I had a friend that was, uh, he had a bunch of um, graphic cards screwed into two by fours. And uh, he had a bunch of servers that were running. Uh, we had uh, this TeamSpeak server that we used to talk on and stuff like that. But um, that's and, old school. Yeah, I know, right? But, but I had no idea, like he would talk to me about it and it would just, all of it would go over my head. And I just thought it was like computer stuff or, or whatever, because the way I was originally introduced to it, somebody told me Bitcoin is an, as a program that allows it to scrape money off the internet. And they're like, there's always these transactions on the, on the internet. And some of it have like pennies that get lost. And so Bitcoin's this program that goes on the internet and scrapes all these transactions. And then you can earn some of these transactions by mining it. And so that's how I was introduced to it. So I didn't really have that much interest in it, but, it, but then it, it started exploding um, in 2017. And then, and then I started reading about it. Yeah. And I think I watched an Andreas Antonopoulos video and then oh, I was yeah. like, holy cool. crap, I didn't know this thing existed. And then it was like blowing my mind. I was like, how are so many people against this? Why does everyone want this to fail? Like, shouldn't only like a hundred, a few hundred people in the world want this to fail? Like it, it yeah. just didn't make sense to me, but That's yeah. Cool. Did That's you so. hold? Oh yeah. Well, I, I, I took out some profit, but I held the majority of it all the way through. Yeah. Lost all of all it. Through. Through. Okay. And so now all I'm right. like, now I'm like freaked out through, I'm like, dude, I need to take profit before. Cause I know it's going to correct. And then I mm. want to take, then I want to put it back in once it hopefully finds a bottom ish. I don't know. So we'll, we'll yeah. see, but uh, yeah. It's cool that you found an Andreas Antonopoulos video. You know, I, if there was one person I'd want people to watch on YouTube who are like brand new and just want to like learn more, I'd say him. Um, like he's just got such a good way of explaining things and even things people get wrong, like the uh, energy problem with mining being a bad thing for the world. Well, actually, the way he explains it, it's one of the leading industries for pioneering uh, renewable energies because it's, uh, location independent and it can do that unlike any other industry and so it's one of the leading green energy things in the world and it's like i wouldn't know that without him He's, oh that's interesting yeah. actually i didn't even yeah didn't even think about that it's, yeah i'll have to send you videos really good huh yeah so Gollum was your first purchase huh that's funny it was i don't I, know where that is anymore yeah um, i have no idea what happened to that <laughs> yeah i i never i i heard of it you know it's funny as you as i go through the top 100 now it's like i, I look like the bottom 100 and i'm just like oh wow that used to be up there and there's like a story for every single coin it's like man i've been here too long <laughs> true not not long enough actually stories. i i realize next at the end of next year i have like a year and a half and then i will be actively in crypto for 50 percent of the time bitcoin's been alive so i'm like That'll be nice. my, my happily mark. <laughs> That's nice. Um, so yeah, um, you ended up obsessing over it for a week. And then um, from what I understand, you like took out a loan to get a bunch of Bitcoin, huh? I did. Uh, talk about like cringe, irresponsible, but uh, it worked out. <laughs> like, yeah. Bitcoin was like $1,000. What I did was it wasn't like a credit card or anything like that. I took out a loan. It was like five or 6% interest or something like that. I got it over a long enough duration that if I lost 100% of my money, Bitcoin went to absolutely zero, then I could still pay it off. So it was the most responsible, irresponsible thing I've done, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it. I can't, I just can't imagine uh, <laughs> getting into debt to buy Bitcoin is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially all the people that did it when it was at 20K. Jeez. <clears throat> yeah. 
what, someone, what, what, uh, someone framed their purchase of, of, of a $19,500 Bitcoin on Coinbase. It was like a literal top that they had on that exchange. But he's got it on his wall. That's oh yeah, cool. I think I've seen that before. He's like he posted like any OG, like anyone who can who ever bought higher than me or something like that. He had some quote like that. Yeah, that's funny. What about what about your family? What do they think about uh, crypto? So it was um, it was just my wife really, and uh, she was always not just supportive but more aggressive with it than I was. She's like, oh okay, so it's gone up. Why don't why don't I just put more in? <laughs> <laughs> she's always been more than supportive uh the rest of the family is still trying to catch on like i don't know like i sent my cousins some bitcoin in the past they're now in profit it took a while this was back in 2018 i sent them some so it took a long time maybe that wasn't the best introduction but huh. um yeah i think now like uh it's getting there i think my uh my, my parents-in-law have some bitcoin uh, my mom used to uh, she had to sell for a new computer at some point, but uh, slow, slowly but surely. Do do you get those? Yours? Do you get those? Uh, they're they're pretty supportive. My my mom is super gung ho about it. Um, my awesome. my father um, is is interested in the financial aspect of it, be, being rich. Not doesn't really care about the technology as much as um, as much as. Uh, you know, I think my mom's probably up in that up, up in that area as well. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, the attitude I get mostly, probably nineteen out of twenty times, is like some sort of scoffy. You know, like I'll wear a Bitcoin shirt or I'll wear a shirt that says "Hodl," and people are like, "What does that mean?" I'm like, "Oh, it's a crypto um, shirt. It means you know, hold on for dear life." And they're like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." You know, they'll they'll make little comments like that, and so I think most people I run into are like really anti and they it feels like they they want it to fail for some reason they're like good luck it's interesting like, it's i like, i guess it's because they're not involved right yeah none of them are involved <laughs> they're just like yeah you don't want to look stupid if it goes on a tear and you you don't have any then you would rather it didn't do that than like it's selfish right but you, i guess no one wants to feel silly so yeah, the, these are the stock people. They're like, stocks always go up. You know, Bitcoin's been going up and down. Why would I do that when, you know, Amazon's been doubling in the last, you know, year and a half or whatever, right? So, uh, you know, yeah. it is what it is, I guess. And then they have those gold bugs, you know, still as well, which is kind of surreal to me. I actually ran into a guy. He, he just, uh, I, I don't know how much it was, but it was in the millions of silver where they actually brought their own trucks, their own employees across nation, security company, whatever. And he bought a crap ton of silver. He's super, he, he, he got rid of a bunch of his gold and he's switching it for silver. I'm not really into that world, but, um, but anyways, he, he, he wanted me to tell him he likes Bitcoin. So he's like, what should I buy? He's like, give me all these projects. I'm like, uh, Tika Tawari's, uh, you know, five million to five coins or five hundred dollars, whatever his you know stuff okay. is. I'm like, uh, okay. I'm like, well, just probably just Bitcoin and Ethereum for now. Yeah, <laughs> this is one extreme to the other. Yeah, that yeah. coin only has six million market cap. I don't know, man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> gold bugs are really funny to have conversations with. with like, uh, but it. It's not an either or situation. You can you can still have some of both. You know, like stock market guys. Yeah, they've got a point. It does always go up, but you don't have to be 100% in one or the other. So, yeah, allocate for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, when you look for advice, who who are you looking for? Who do you go for for advice on crypto stuff? You know, um. I didn't like for the longest time I haven't. And uh, I read this book about trading a while back and it describes the absolute terrible idea that it is to look at news sites and try and get like public opinion for your investments. Like obviously you need to do it to a degree, right? You need to understand what it is, but after a certain point, there is a lot of um, like, generally speaking, doing what the masses do is a terrible decision. Like nine, 
99 times out of 100 is a terrible decision. And a lot of your opinions are going to be influenced by going to uh, these new sites, by going to Reddit, going to Twitter. Um, I do it because I need to, right? I make content, but I also understand that a lot of this stuff should and I will meme on and uh, yeah, sort of be contrarian all the time. Or at least that's what I try and be. So yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to answer that question. You get to a point where you're comfortable and look for more information as long as you understand that a lot of it is, uh, uh, you need to be really critical, right? I think I remember you talking about this on one of your videos, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like once I get too much information, I, it makes it really hard for me to, the more information I get, the harder it is for me to make that decision, like information overload or something like that. I don't know. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, I actually, a lot of people um, uh, when talking about you, it's always brought up about your speed and the, of how quickly you make the video, edit the video and put out the video. And when you were, you know, by the way, does he, do, they, do the jokes, crypto, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever that, does that, does that really bother you? Or are you just like, yeah, whatever? <laughs> I think, um, I think I keep the name now because of those guys. I oh, won't yeah. change it because <laughs> of that. <them. laughs> I, I find it funny every time I see that and a lot of people are like, it's like, I wonder if they think they're being original. Like, I, know, uh, right? I, I thought this, this joke's so funny <laughs> or whatever. Um, but how often do you spend when it comes to like recording and stuff like that? I mean, I, I me personally, I mean, I, I record videos. I don't know. I spent hundreds, maybe thousands of hours putting videos together. And I probably don't even have half the speed that, that you do. Um, is it just, you've been doing this a really long time or you just take some classes to like figure stuff out quickly or how are you able to do that so quickly? Well, I imagine there's a ton of people that would disagree with you about the speed aspects, uh, very strongly, but no, it is true. I can do what I do theoretically in a day, but the, like the stars need to align for that to happen. Uh, it's extremely rare now. Uh, I, um, I think I would typically spend like two to three days on a video now um, that obviously I'm, I'm like putting out like weekly content right now. And that's not by choice. I've been like something comes up or uh, yeah, uh, you know, this week I've been looking at houses and that's been really like pulling my mind away from, from uh, making more content. But uh, yeah, two to three days a day for the scripting and yeah, usually like one full day, but if I'm any, any, if I don't get a full day for editing, I can't get it done. I think it's just practice. Like, I think um, if, if you keep doing what you can and trying the next time to do a little bit more, then it will be easier for you to do what you've already done before and know how to do. And if you just keep on doing that, trying a little bit more each time, like when you're, when you're either writing or you're editing a video, then you'll find at some point, like after a long period of time, you'll be uh, like really, really good. What, what do you use? Do you use Adobe or what do you use to edit? Yeah, Adobe Premiere Pro. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, I just started using um, motion graphics. Do you know about motion graphics? Uh, no. Yeah, they're, they're like little template things. So like if you wanna do like cool swiping, you know, uh. titles or whatever, and then you can just adjust the color, the size, the anyways, um, I'll, uh, I'll send you a link. Or whatever. Templates are really good. They they speed up a lot. Um, the only downside is that you don't know how to do it yourself without the template. Oh yeah 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 yeah. So I ha, the way I I um I guess it's like stealing, right? I'll take the template and then I'll I'll kind of like reverse it. <laughs> so I have to like figure out how they do it. It's the only way I can learn. If I try to do it initially from like a a tutorial, I always run into a, a, a time where like my program is is a newer version of theirs and it just doesn't work or something like that. Uh, so annoying, right? I think I did maybe. Uh, no, I didn't do this, but I definitely recommend someone does a course like a paid one. They're like 10 bucks, 15 bucks on Udemy or something like that. Uh, oh, yeah. You can get the specific version. They give you test footage. You know, it's like oh. everything. I, I, I was self-taught, but I don't recommend that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Longer. Yeah. Udemy helped me out. There is actually a Bitcoin course. I, I, I 
it's the only Bitcoin course I've ever paid for. And it was like 15 bucks. Um, but I initially paid for it because he had a section on how to set up a mining rig and I had issues with the software and I was hoping he could teach me that, which he didn't. But, uh, oh. but the course was really great. And, and, uh, and then he oh. dropped to like five bucks, but, um, but yeah, you, you is pretty good. Yeah, I know some people think anything like crypto course is a scam, like anything you need to pay for, but sometimes it, yeah, you can definitely get that. At, le at least I, I I've spoken to enough people now to, to know that, no, sometimes they provide way more than the value that you paid for it. So, so, um, if crypto wasn't a thing, um, would you still be interested in making YouTube videos? And if so, what would you like to make content for? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, for sure. I love YouTube. Uh, I've, I've always thought, you know, that I could do that, you know, like looking at someone. Um, I actually started a channel back in 2015. I was making Hearthstone highlights. Have you ever played Hearthstone? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, it's a Blizzard game. It's like a, a trading card thingy. Um, it was kind of popular at the time. But uh, so that didn't work out like at all. It was really uh, like when I started this channel, I thought there's no way this is ever going to turn into anything. I didn't start it to, to make a to make a living or anything like that because I knew how hard it was. But, um, you know, a lot of people have said to me, you should do something else you know i think they look at my engagement for crypto and they think that you know if i was in a different sector maybe i'd get more and uh, i think the problem with that is i i i want to do something i'm passionate about mm -hmm. and i think this is one of the reasons i don't get out more content is because i i need to i need to i need that passion right i need i need to want to do it if I am having a bad day, I'm not going to write a script. Like I'm not going to find memes. Like it's just, it's just one of those things where it just can't happen. I guess it would be kind of similar to like a, I don't, I don't want to say artist, like a, like a painter or something. Right. I'm not trying to describe what I do as like a beautiful masterpiece. It can look like a stick drawing or something, but uh, <laughs> what I do needs to, I need to be in the right mindset. So if it wasn't crypto, it'd be something else I'm passionate about, which I, I really don't know what i'm passionate about outside of crypto all that much i like food uh, <laughs> i like I like gaming but I'd, i wouldn't really be a let's player it's really crowded so i probably wouldn't be on youtube if it wasn't for crypto I'm, I'm amazed that i am i think it's it's so hard to start especially in this really niche small community yeah you know there isn't that many people watching crypto youtube videos so yeah i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I've I've found that there's um like like I, I started watching Casey Neistat videos and I didn't really get into any vloggers outside of that. And then I kind of transitioned into YouTube and now I kinda of, I've been using YouTube as like a learning, I, I just uh like to learn cool stuff or whatever. But I've I've hit a, a niche of like a I think uh, barely sociable when he came out with a video talking about who Satoshi Nakamoto is. I don't know if you've seen that. Have you seen that? Uh, maybe I can't remember off the top of it, my head. It's a two-parter. Um, essentially, um, uh, Ga uh, Gavin, no, not Gavin Wood. Um, uh, uh, Blake. Oh, geez, CEO of uh, Blockstream. Um, uh, Anderson. Doesn't matter. Anyways, um, he had a two-part video of of who Satoshi was, but the way he did it was was just kind of really cool. I don't know uh, um, whether you know he is Satoshi or not. Um, uh, got me into learning, like doing a lot of like mystery stuff. So if I was to separate from, from crypto, I think I'd want to do some sort of mystery stuff. But right now I'm learning a lot about the Silk Road uh, and uh, about Ross Albright and the whole situation. I'm like hundreds and hundreds of pages deep into depositions. Really? And, and, and the whole thing is just like surreal and crazy to me. So I'm like, I think I can find a lot of mystery and crazy stuff in crypto. Um, there's been situations where people had to fake their deaths in order to, you know, uh, you know, the whole, I don't know, there's just so much. So I, I might start making like kind of cool, like crazy stuff that happened in crypto mystery type vibe videos or, or whatever. But uh, it's hard to, everyone kind of does the same thing where they like chart TA, which I find it surreal that people do technical analysis on like alt altcoins, but whatever. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And then they like do a couple news things and then they like give their opinion of where they think the price is going to go. I feel like that's like most videos or whatever. And by the way, that, that makes me um, think about this. this. This is one of the reasons why I love your channel is um, there's very few people I can recommend channels to because you, you know, this person is like very strongly this way. And, and I, I feel like you're pretty open-minded and even when you talk trash on things, it's like done in a, in a I don't know, not a, not a trashy way. I, I can't really explain it. Um, mm. But uh, but I, I don't really see like heavy bias in your channel as well. And and uh, and and I, I feel like and yeah, your, your videos are like completely different. You don't you don't post the same kind of I want to say crap because I you know, I do watch those edit videos and enjoy them. But uh, but the same like stuff that everyone else else does. Um, uh, I don't know. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, you know, when I started, I was, I was going for what box mining does. Like I watched him before I started YouTube and I thought that's a good place. I I'm going to do what he does. And then I quickly, like no disrespect to, to, to box mining. I think what he does, he does very well. When I started, I thought, okay, I need to differentiate. I need to, I need to do the opposite almost of what everyone else is doing. Okay. So like most stuff is long and a little bit dry. So I'm going to do like short and I'm going to try and make it a little bit funny. Right. There's, there's no humor back then, especially. I think some people now have gotten the idea of using a funny clip or two. Uh, back then, no, it was really dry. Um, and I've just continued to, to try and be the opposite of, like what, what people think and, uh, and do on YouTube mostly. I don't know how good I am. I don't know how much like successful I am at doing that, but yeah. Uh, but I definitely wish more people uh, would do that. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I love your little um, Fiat Daily. Holy crap, dude. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Every time I see Fiat Daily on the, on the screen though, I'm just like full volume. <laughs> But uh, he's a good character. I, I like your your characters that you make and your little green screen. I I was I was like, man, I want to go through your very first video and just like take all of your freaking green screen stuff you've did, and just make like one long, uh, you know, crypto daily meme thing. But uh, yeah, they're all, they're all really good, dude. And I'm I'm surprised Thank no one has much. has copied that from you. Um, yeah, yeah, surprising. You know, the one of the most surprising things that people didn't copy was uh, meme review. I've probably done about 40 now, um, but I think I know why it's so hard. It's like, you would think it's like the easiest thing to produce. It really isn't. It's the hardest thing and it's getting harder. Actually in 2018, the memes were so good. They, the, the episode wrote itself. Yeah. In 2018, <laughs> <won't die. laughs> it was great stuff. Um, now it's, I have to wait like three months in between meme reviews now because I need I need like the good memes to stockpile in the meantime. Oh yeah. Although I don't look at them beforehand because I want uh, real reactions, but I just know from having done the episodes before, like I need to leave it longer. Like these ones aren't. I recorded two hours for of footage for the last one, and it ended up being an eight minute video. Oh geez. So yeah. <laughs> Oh dang! Go out siphoning through a two-hour um, footage, man. That that doesn't seem like a lot of fun. <laughs> Wasn't. Um, so um, I guess I got three things I want to mention about you as well. Um, one, your uh, your trees, trees in your videos. I remember you used to bring up trees in your videos, and and I, I I never knew why. I'm assuming people brought it up as like good luck or like, hey, where's your yeah, trees or whatever. It was an up upheaval when this disappeared exactly and that was the other thing people were uh, everyone keeps asking where's the bonsai tree how is the bonsai tree doing so that's why you got it <laughs> huh is because of uh people's requests for trees in your videos or, or something um it's funny how communities can be built around the strangest things so i used to use a lot of background footage that i thought was pretty and apparently they had a lot of trees in them and uh i put this in my office because i thought it looked good and then apparently people well i don't think anyone said anything until it disappeared and then other people were vocal and the same thing with the super dry hoodies it's like it's like such a meme now i feel like i can't really wear other hoodies almost um it didn't start from anything but i feel i'm betraying my audience now if I'm <laughs> <not wearing one. laughs> 
I know, right? If it's uh, if we're pushing like a uh, you know 17k or something, and you hop on without that hoodie on, it's like, what is he doing? Revolt. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, when when uh, we were first initially talking, you were saying um, you were saying that you didn't think many people would be interested in hearing much about crypto daily, right? It, it, is that and that way? Do you do you, th- do you really think that? <laughs> I th- you know I. I feel it's the exact opposite. Um, everyone is wanting to know the personals. It's like, yeah, yeah, we know how he thinks about Bitcoin. We get it. We see his videos. But tell us about Cameron. <laughs> you know, if you think that people are interested, then I will I will concede and and say, you know, maybe you're right. My 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 thoughts have always been like, I'll make a video and I'll appreciate anyone that watches it, but I'll never make it thinking people need to need to watch this. That like I need to be heard or I deserve to be heard or anything like that. I've been invited to like blockchain conferences where they want me to speak. And it's like, why would you like, okay, I understand like maybe from a marketing point of view, maybe you think uh, views are legitimacy of content, but I've never looked at it at that, that way. Um, views are legitimacy of uh, like algorithming or I don't know, just like presenting. It's never, it's never about, okay, you're, you're someone, right? So the fact that like, uh, you know, you want to do this with me and you want to, you know, you, you got some questions and stuff. Like I, I find that humbling and, uh, and that's really cool and I'm happy to do it. But yeah, I didn't think people uh, like should, be interested but if they are then that's that's flattering i guess well yeah yeah all the questions i got um were pretty much focused towards um who is cameron specifically <laughs> yeah and then the annoying ones which i i sent to you like uh you know wind moon and uh when we hit in 20k and next top those questions well, are really annoying but let me tell you about that so <laughs> <laughs> no like i don't know I, i'm pretty sure i'm very very similar to you uh, with this, like no one knows, like I could definitely say something like, you know, something that sounds smart, like when the NVT ratio flips positive and combined with this, like no, no one knows. Uh, it's like, it depends on what whales want to do. Like we can look at current indicators and they look really good. Uh, but yeah, you just can't say, can you? I wouldn't be surprised by anything though. Like this is one of the videos that I want to make soon. So maybe this is a little bit of a spoiler, but the world is kind of designed around like beating you down financially, like keeping the poor poor and the rich rich. And, uh, you know, you have like average incomes not rising, but then you have like average cost housing exploding, average, you know, tuition fees exploding. Um, you just have all, all of these things like like you can try and invest in gold and stuff, but you 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 don't know how much there is they they make a lot of paper for it so you're just buying paper at the end of the day they have the stock market that's the biggest thing but then after that approvable unalterable like it's just there's nothing like it in the world and uh yeah just like six figures seven figures like it could definitely happen the only like the biggest cry the the biggest threat i think is the whole government spanning uh government spanning the banking sector right so where you if you sell and they see it then you get into trouble like that's the only real threat but other than that like i just see it as being unstoppable long term yeah i just i just saw a video of a senator that just got um put into office i think she was just elected and she was like all pro bitcoin i thought that was kind of cool oh is that like i think she's called crypto mom like she's been dubbed out or something oh really yeah i don't know it, it might be someone else, but yeah, there's definitely a few people that, that like on Reddit, they just love them. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like anyone, anyone in the government, they just have to say anything positive once about Bitcoin and there's gonna be like thousands of memes made about them. Like yeah. in moon costumes yeah. and on rockets or whatever. Yeah. I think Joe Rogan was like, man, you do not want to piss off the Bitcoin community. <laughs> like, he's like, Oh yeah. yeah they're, they're like fanatical. <laughs> it wasn't a good look, but yeah, that's what you were saying about us. That's funny. So, um, uh, let's let me uh, talk about Bitcoin for a second. So, I liked your uh, your answer on power consumption. I get asked that a lot, and and 
you know, I have some answers that, you know, um, uh, and I, I figured a lot of people were going renewable in, anyways, just because it's going to be cheaper and they'll make more money. Um, but, uh, but what about, um, <laughs> what about the lightning network? What do you think about the lightning net network? Oh, it's, it's, it's very impressive. And it's just 18 months away. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, I know Andreas likes it. So that's a big one for me, but um, I think that I like, ideally there are more pressing issues to be done on the actual uh, layer zero rather than like these layer one and layer two solutions. So I'm more hopeful of that happening. Um, like, like we don't, don't necessarily need lightning. Like if we, if we can re just reduce the fees and reduce the times, which I think is like, you know, it's, it's more than, it's more than theoretically possible. It is possible. It's just that the devs are so conservative because they're dealing with so much money. Uh, I guess that's a good thing. They don't want to make a mistake, but like, I think the technology is there that you can do pretty much everything that you need to from a, you know, a digital currency worldwide, just there on layer zero. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. 16, 16, just 18 months. We'll <laughs> see. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the people that are really super pressed on, Hey, we need to get this figured out quickly right now are the people that are like have heavy bags and want those bags pumped. So it's like, if something is going to be done the right way, like, does it really matter a time frame if it takes a year, four, five years? I don't know. Um, I, yeah. I I feel like they're trying to just be really careful and not make a mistake that could end up making Bitcoin obsolete. But maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't maybe, know coding or any of that stuff. So, you know, the other conspiracy theory is that they're trying to keep fees high to so they can introduce their other paid for features. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Or some block streams liquid or whatever. But I think, um, yeah, what you're saying is really right about, you know, people, basically almost everything anyone says is motivated by money to a degree, like a really sad degree. Um, so, yeah, you've got people like um, Craig Wright or, or Roger Veer who, uh, for some reason, make the really weird statement that, like, like this is cheaper and faster than Bitcoin. But then so is literally thousands of other cryptos that that is not a, U, a unique selling point at all it's not unique at all and it just doesn't make sense except if you've got loads of bags right <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny um speaking of uh bitcoin cash they're they're forking again today that's, that's I didn't crazy even know. yeah i um i actually saw it from a a martini video a couple of days ago and then i then like yesterday i saw a ton of articles talking about it but yeah it looks like they're they're forking it again which um which i was like yeah whatever who cares and then i was like oh yeah i was like whatever who cares about the fork of lightning network last year when it dropped the price like crazy <laughs> so i'm like right. hey, let's hope that doesn't happen that would be not fun so i think as much as it's so fun to meme on, on those projects like really i'm, I'm going to continue to do it it's great the idea that okay bitcoin btc wants to scale on chain oh well i don't know no it, it wants it wants to scale off chain i guess i don't know what they're doing with it uh bch wants to introduce loads of features like they want like uh they want to have tokens running on it um they want to scale on and off chain and then you've got sv which wants to scale completely on chain. And I like the idea that you can take Bitcoin in different directions. I just, I don't agree that they should be called Bitcoin and try it. I don't like the whole consumer confusion thing, but I don't mind them pursuing alternative paths, even if it, the only benefit of it is, okay, let's not do that. That didn't work out. Like yeah. <laughs> I still see value in that. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things that got me super frustrated um, with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin.com and everything when I first started as well. And there was a time where if you went to Bitcoin.com and you bought Bitcoin, your wallet would have Bitcoin Cash and they, they got in trouble for that. And that, wow. um, But uh, uh, 
Yeah, and I, I don't even think they have their, didn't they get their Twitter account taken away from them? So now like the Bitcoin Twitter handle is someone else's. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny. Like the, the idea of deplatforming is scary, but it is uh, Jack Dorsey's platform. So that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy that he did that. I love that Jack Dorsey is obsessed about Bitcoin. It's cool. I, I can't wait for more. Uh, Jack Dorsey, he's, he, he's, he's, a, he's a divisive figure in the community because like he is like, super cool for bitcoin but then he's also the devil because of uh his silencing of like certain political views and deplatforming oh etc. yeah so it's a touchy one yeah i i haven't i i see the rage on twitter people pissed off but i haven't done the uh, deep dive in the articles to see exactly what's going on and it's hard for me to my mental i have to uh you know i have to keep my mental brain like a little happy right so i can't be like think talk going deep into all this crazy crap and realizing the whole world's <laughs> i'm already into bitcoin all right that's my limit all right just kidding that's for sure yeah <laughs> you've got a certain tolerance which yeah, exactly uh, bitcoin takes a lot of <laughs> i know that feeling um all right so um just a couple more questions um before i wrap it up um what are your thoughts about the recent DeFi hype um and everyone obsessing over the word DeFi, like I, I initially like didn't make sense to me because I was like, wait, crypto is, is DeFi. Like I understand like a lot of working yeah. projects aren't there, but like I don't understand the hype all of a sudden recently. And then recently as, as well, NFTs, even though like I've, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly familiar, familiar with NFTs and, you know, the DeFi projects and all that sort of stuff. I kind of don't understand why the DeFi became so heavily now. Maybe there's been a lot more working projects. And then also um, like crypto kitties was huge and then NFTs were nothing. And then now all of a sudden 2020 NFTs are like the bees knees again. Yeah. The, yeah. Weird, huh? Um, the psych people are, are, are really strange in this space. Um, <laughs> I'll talk about the negatives and then the positives. Um, so what I kind of regret was that the term DeFi got used and replaced it essentially replaced the term altcoin. So when you said DeFi, you meant everything, every single altcoin, pr pretty much. So like if you talked about anything good in DeFi, then the fact that um, sushi roll or hot dog or, um, you know, pumpkin pie coin rugged, then you're wrong about your opinions about DeFi. And that's, that's what happened. The community doesn't understand DeFi <laughs> or it doesn't understand in a way to differentiate it from altcoin. Because you wouldn't say to someone, you talk good about altcoins, but uh, my token uh, Bonanno or whatever uh, got rugged. So you, you were wrong about altcoins. Yeah. Uh, like, like I've seen that on Twitter, people are very uh, aggressive blaming people for talking positively about DeFi. I, I know a lot of people lost money, so I can get it. But so the idea, so the positives, and this is what I talked about in my videos, I never mentioned any token specifically. The idea behind earning yield on Bitcoin, Ethereum, or stable coins is really cool. The idea of buying risky uh, coins without much history, without much proof of like concept working, uh, that's always going to be risky. Um, but the idea of still holding on to the assets, yes, it's a smart contract. So it's not as safe as holding it yourself. That's for sure. I admit that. The idea is cool. Yeah. Um, now, I think for the most part, a lot of projects in DeFi have more of a working product than any ICO from 2017, pretty much. Like maybe Chainlix is like an example of where that's not the case. But for the 99.9% .9 of all other projects, it's much, much better. Um, they actually do something and it's working, right? Uh, again, there's differentiating between something like uh, uh, SNX or, uh, you know, uh, so, some others like uh, YFI as versus like hot dog and sushi roll and whatever else. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, very marred launch. I don't know if it's really going to, recover fully from that that horrible like a tainted name that it's got now but i think eventually it will when it when it proves itself 
Yeah, I, I was thinking like maybe Uniswap came out and now people were able to just buy coins instantly, you know, sell coins instantly. And then so people, I don't know, like the, the DeFi word craze, I, I feel like I didn't hear it as much in, until like Uniswap started, um, you know, becoming like more and more of a powerhouse and people like, oh yeah, DeFi, DeFi projects or... I don't know, but yeah, that word has so many there has so many definitions that people can just like use it for anything. I feel like, and it just is is really confusing. Yeah. Do you, so do you use Uniswap now, like a lot, or like more than the the other exchanges? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's cool, right? I, I it's awesome, and and that's an example of uh, of like a good DeFi product, you know. So I just wish people understood stood that more rather than you know, jumping into these, these terrible projects that were essentially Ponzi's. Yeah. I really, I really like uh, Uniswap super easy. Um, what about, uh, all right, I have a couple more questions for you. So, um, what do you, okay, let's talk about exit plans for, for Bitcoin. Um, what <laughs> um, what would you do or recommend or say or whatever when it comes to um, a situation like a lot of people were in where they got a ton of money in, in 2017 and thought it was going to keep going up and held all the way through and uh, didn't take any profits? Um, what would you say to those people into this next run up? Well, this is easy. It's the, the saying is never invest more than you can afford to lose. It seems so simple, but apparently it's really hard for some people. Um, and I think where you were going with that question, like maybe probing a little bit deeper, like when would you exit? Like if I toss that to you first, what, what are your thoughts? When do you exit Bitcoin completely or not? Oh, I'm, I'm never exiting completely. Well, I mean, yeah. let's, let's say it goes up to like a quarter million dollars and within the next 12 months and then it dips down. And then within like a month, it drips down to like 200 K I might take out and wait until, uh, until it gets down to 130. I don't know. I mean, I just don't know if it goes up to 80 K. I mean, cause if 2017, it was only at $20,000 for two days is at 19,000, I think for three days. 18,000 for like a week, you know, like uh, 17,000 for like a week and a half. So I'm assuming, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping that I'm, I, I just, I just don't know. So if it goes up to like 80 K 90 K and then it starts going and then it drifts down to 80 K 70 K, you know, within a couple of days, I may take out, throw it into a stable coin and, and see what happens you know, and then it goes up to hundred K the next day and I'm going to hate myself. I don't, I don't know. I just, maybe I'll take half out. Actually, I'm probably not going to take all out. Right. Because I'll be scared of that happening. I don't know. So I, I guess my plan is, uh, you know, we'll just see when it gets closer and I have a lot of plans and we'll just see what works best when I get there. Well, yeah. So I, I like moving away from like the trading aspect of it, I think it, it kind of depends on your plans. If you need, you need to, to buy your forever home or you need to buy your way out of debt, you need you need this new car, whatever, those goals should be taken care of as and when you can. But like realistically for me, if I didn't need to sell, I wouldn't unless mm -hmm. I thought, okay, this was euphoria. Now we're have, heading into a, a big, uh, big crash. Um, so like right now, like the biggest one of the biggest indicator that this isn't euphoria like I, I still think a big correction could come 30 40 percent but that that this isn't euphoria is that the fact that uh this is a spot-led market uh, derivatives are not leading this market and when a derivative leads it that means volatility can come like really big so like if people are like overwhelmingly longing bitcoin and it's going up uh the moment that bitcoin starts to come down uh, or those people's positions get liquidated, they sell Bitcoin, like it just gets crazy volatile. Like we saw that in uh, in March, where Bitcoin hit like 3000, like for like a second or so. Oh, yeah. Um, but this is a spot led meaning it's actual Bitcoin being bought and people on derivatives are mostly like kind of, they have a bearish bias. <laughs> like they've been shorting 
the uh, bias to shorting this entire past month, which is crazy to me. But yeah, that's been what's happening. So uh, people aren't euphoric. Uh, like they might start to get it eventually, but it's not right now. So yeah. But if I need, if I if I had what I needed now to buy something really important for my life, then you know, uh, I can't really blame someone for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm. I feel like I'm pretty lucky. I, I haven't put myself ma massively in debt. In fact, I was debt free completely a few years ago, and so I celebrated by buying like a Dodge Challenger, super nice car, and putting myself back into debt. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, I, I I think my goal for Bitcoin is um, I want a dream home, um, yeah. and I would like to work Bitcoin full time. Um, I, I actually love my job. I'm in a I'm in a weird situation that most people aren't in, where I enjoy my job. I work more than I have to because I want to do good. And I, I uh, but if it came down to that or working full time in something I'm passionate about, if I can get paid to spend you know eight hours a day you know, diving into Bitcoin and learning about new you know projects and all that sort of stuff, I'd love that for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that's a really cool. Uh... A really rare thing to say that you enjoy what you do um but uh yeah i would say that um when money's involved with the, the 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 crypto aspect it can get a little money like there's so many projects that want you to to to, to shill absolute garbage and it's just like it's it's soul crushing the, the the speaking to those companies i wouldn't wish that on anyone but uh you know like the whole the whole bitcoin side of things that's nice you know it's good for the soul i enjoy it everything else i do not <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> a good job that's funny um well i guess uh you know that's it um i have for you i super appreciate you coming on <laughs> it was it was fun i appreciate it. maybe we should do this again sometime maybe i'll have some questions for you and uh we'll see how it goes but uh yeah definitely appreciate your time today yeah, in the future, I'd, I'd love to um, maybe if I do some sort of skit where I go into a bank or something, and I need like a 30 second clip of Fiat Daily telling me uh, <laughs> something or, or whatever, I could reach out to you or something. That'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's a busy man, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> or I'll, I'll try and float, float something. He, he, he takes he's, he's very cheap. He's yeah, very cheap, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, um, cool, man. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, See you on Twitter. <laughs> cool. Been a pleasure. All right, have a good one. I'll see you. Bye. Bye bye. Hey guys, before we left, I just wanted to say I appreciate you stopping by again, watching this video. Appreciate uh, Cameron. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I just feel still mind blown that you're doing this. You're doing this with a you know little small channel like me, and you reached out and spent that time. That uh, you know kind of shows who you are. That's awesome that you would do that. Um, and uh, for everybody else, just know I make ch I make videos on this channel directed towards newer people in the space. Uh, so if you know you are brand new or there are brand new people entering the space, all my videos are directed towards that. I try not to go crazy deep into technical stuff. Um, and uh, and then everything YouTube, everything that YouTube gives me for this channel goes straight to charity. So um, you know eventually we can do some fun stuff with that money down the road. I'm really excited about. But I uh, really appreciate everyone stopping by again. Thank you, Cameron. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the next video. I'll take care. Bye.